G'day, Alex here from Tactical Arbitrage, and in this video we'll have a look at this very important filter, profit and return on investment. So this is a this is a pretty important filter to actually use, and I don't recommend you use a lot of filters, and I certainly don't re recommend making any of your filters too tight, so you accidentally miss out on a product that may have been just a few ranks away or a few uh, a few percent return on investment away, for example. So let's have a look at this. It's profit and return on investment. And the two filters are only keep the data if the gross profit is at least a certain amount of dollars and only keep the data if gross return on investment is at least a certain percentage. Now, um, I can totally understand why you would use this if you don't want to see anything which is just going to make you a buck or a buck fifty. You may want something which is going to start, you know, even even those really high rank products that move quickly, uh, or, or would you say low rank products that move quickly? Those those few thousand item, a uh, few few thousand rank items, you still possibly want to make sure that there's a little bit of juice in the tank to to justify that, especially when you take into account that. Uh, prices can shift a little bit on Amazon so if there's only really a dollar in it for example and then the prices shift a bit or a few extra people come on the listing and they, they put in a little bit of a race to the bottom so not a practice I certain not a practice I agree with it at all but certainly does happen you want to make sure there's just a little bit of meat in the profit to make sure that it covers those kinds of contingencies so in that case you may want to enter something in here just to uh, increase the spread a little bit. Then again, and to play devil's advocate, I wouldn't necessarily make this too dramatic because you might find that when you've analyzed a product further using a tool like Tactical Edge, which we'll be covering in an upcoming video, uh, that there is only a couple of sellers in the way of a much better profit. So if you put in something too dramatic here, like say three or four dollars, then you might then turn around and find out that you've eliminated a product that um, by the time we've got one seller out of the way, uh, we certainly had at least you know uh, three or four dollars or more available to uh, to profit. So in short, it's uh, only keep data if gross profit is at least a certain amount of dollars. If you use it, use it cautiously. The same is the same can be said for only keep data if gross return on investment is at least a certain percentage. I like to keep this super low myself. In fact, I will look at things 5% or higher because if I can see that something is flipping very, very quickly, even at sort of 5 to 10%, I think about what kind of money my, uh, what kind of percentage my money would make if I just left it sitting in the bank doing nothing while I thought about what to do next. I certainly would not get 5% every month or 5% every few weeks. So, uh, I will still look at those low percentage uh, products and then when I'm looking at my view data page later, I'll decide where I'm going to allocate my cash accordingly. If, uh, if there's better, higher gross return on investment products there to spend my capital on, I'll certainly go for those. But if there's only low percentage items there, but they sell very, very quickly, then I won't necessarily ignore those either. So use these filters. Definitely want to get across those um, those negative percentage uh, thresholds by putting something in, in here, particularly the percentage filter, but don't necessarily um, make these so dramatic that you eliminate a lot of the good products that could be um, available to analyze further. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.